Hey all viewers, today, at long last, I am going to continue my r reading of Claymore. For those of you who are not familiar with, with what these videos are, basically I started reading this particular manga on my channel a long time ago, um, basically to create videos and to give my commentary about it. Um, these days I'm not so very particularly interested in manga, however this was a project that was rather experimental that I had started on this channel, where basically it was supposed to be a sort of unique type of manga video in which I would give you st narration and my opinions about the story at the same time. So um, without further ado I suppose I should begin. Remember, please, that this is not quality, sort of professional voice acting work or anything like this. This is just a, um, an amateur narration, so to speak. This is completely, how should it be said, an amateur review, narration, commentary, that sort of thing. This is nothing professional. Um, do understand, this is not something that is... Um, Anything other than just one person having fun, I suppose, or just reading something. Anyhow, let me begin. Oh, and for those of you who do not know, this particular uh, manga that I am reading in this video is very bloody, very... It has some themes in it that might be disturbing. So, I know I have many new subscribers and I have a very wide range of videos and because of that I have to inform everyone about what type of video I am doing at whichever particular period in time. So for those of you who are here for the more religious videos or per adventure um, thou art here for how should it be said the more cultural videos having to do with culture um, then this is not, maybe, maybe you would like this, maybe you would not like this, I cannot say. So I am just giving that warning to those of you viewers who, per adventure, think that maybe this video is not something you would wa want to watch. This, this is a video about some obscure uh, manga that was written a long time ago that I'm basically just going to give a narration of and give a, a commentary on. Um, Alright, so this is not a straight narration, nor is this a, what may be called a fan type um, commentary. No, this is a critical, my own opinions about what this is. And I just started, I basically started reading this manga on this channel excuse me for what was it I have no idea how much time has passed since I had started these videos but I had stopped them for a long time and basically I was doing other things and I was very busy so I know I have some subscribers who used to watch these videos and I am telling you that I did not forget thee forget ye um, I did not forget ye and that basically um, I never intended to stop these videos it was just that at different periods in time my interests you know started to change and I had less time to sort of do videos and I had less drive to really do them I suppose now I just feel as though I just might as well do it whether it be rough whether it not necessarily be perfect that is fine that as well this is an amateur channel this is a completely amateur effort so I feel very comfortable in saying that I'm just an average person doing videos on this platform I am just like anyone else and I really am not trying to create five-star content so some people may be interested in these videos some people may not be I used to have a how should I say a viewer base a viewer base that was quite interested in them. Some particular um, individuals subscribed to me because of these Claymore videos. So, 
Anyhow, I should begin now and stop talking so much. Um, alright. Let me take a breath. Show. That may help somewhat. So, uh, wait. Okay, yes, I have to remember that it's from right to left in terms of the reading, you know, the sort of J Japanese manga. So, it's a little late, but can I ask you something? Sure. What is this town, exactly? I guess you'd say it's a nest of Yoma. It was an ordinary town that was wiped out by Yoma. The Yoma described, disguised themselves as townspeople and preyed on any humans who passed through. All right. So we have two new claymores here. They all look the same. I have to say that the aesthetic choice of making all claymores throughout the whole series look the same in the same outfits without any particular peculiarities was a bad choice because it makes the story seem banal. And I do remember when I was reading this manga, there were just certain things about it where I thought the characters that, all of these characters, these claymores, they all basically, they draw, they dress the same way. It look a bit too uniform for me. And sometimes, you know, uni uniforms can sort of destroy, uh, I don't know, they look, every Claymore dresses the same way, carries the same sword. Now, whether we have a story reason for this or not, I have never liked that. I never have. I watched a good deal of the anime and I read all of the manga, for the most part. At some point, you know, I started to realize that this choice of the style of armor, I just started to get very bored of it. Now, probably all, the only thing that is unique about them is their little mark here, the little claymore symbol that each one of them has. They all have different symbols, but nonetheless, I myself, after reading the manga for as long as I did, I started to get very bored of seeing the same armor set I thought surely the artists can create characters that look even somewhat different because they are all different characters and supposedly the author and the artist what he what they basically tried to do was create was to create characters with different personalities so it would be interesting if they sort of had some peculiar physical you know some peculiar outfits that look different and everyone looks the same. And to me, the outfit, I never really liked the outfit. For one thing, it really does not look very militant. And for one thing, it makes very little sense. It, it I, I will put it this way. Um, I just simply got, the aesthetic became boring to me. But anyhow, let me continue. So... How many did you get, Sophia? Let's see. That makes about seven so far. No. Huh? Don't lie to me. There are 13 dead. I took seven, so that leaves you six. Oh, I think you've miscounted. I've been keeping count from the start. Math never was your strong suit. That's why you'll always be number four. Huh? What are you talking about? You're number four. I'm number three. Okay, monster noises. I used to basically do monster noises on when I used to read these, but uh, at this point, it sort of hurts my voice to try to do that, so I basically just read the parts where they talk. Okay. Basically... I have, I used to try to sound out these sound effects, so I will not be doing that this time. We have cutting noises, basically. We have, you know, blood spurting noises. We have flipping noises. 
Um, she's doing cartwheels. Apparently, that is very effective. Um, with more cutting noises, more monster noises. All right. So far, quite boring. I have never been a fan of, you know, basically comic books and manga where the fights are just incredibly easy because those particular those particular publications are very boring to me and I do see that a lot in particular types of manga um, in sooth but anyhow let me continue <laughs> okay more monster noises uh, more cutting noises more you know basically you know Basically, that's what that is. More monster noises. Okay. More monster noises. More fighting. Uh. Okay, apparently she cuts a... She's cutting um, a big pillar down. Somehow. They have explained these swords to basically be able to cut through anything, but... Uh... That has always been sort of an anime thing. The, the, way, the ways they treat these swords, well... I suppose you can explain everything within the narrative context and universe, so. Um, for truth. Anyhow. More monster noises. Alright. More cutting and blood spilling noises. Um, some of these sound effects that they write out, they just do not make sense. Does blood spilling noise make dosha sound? I, I do not think so, but anyhow. Let us continue. Ha! Brute strength as usual. Just like a gorilla. Acrobatics as usual. Just like a monkey. What? You want to try me? You're the one who started it. Fine. Let's settle who's number three right now. Okay, by me. I'm sick of arguing with you anyway. Stop it, you two. Okay. She just walks past this Yoma, and apparently they're, they're dead now. Um, alright. Uh, she did not have to do anything, she's just that fast. I cannot tell you how much I really do despise. I, I, this stuff in comic books and in different publications, this is so boring. This sh this is so boring. I mean, you just walk past them. The, the the monsters are dead now. The Yoma are dead. You did not have to touch them. You did not have to take the sword that you have and use it at all. I have problems with this. It makes me annoyed. So, I know that many of ye... Um, have you know, per adventure, um, heard people say that, um, how should it be said, you know, Claymore is a really good manga, I really like it, the writing is really good, the art style is really great, um, I think that the art style is fine, even though, to me, I don't, I do not see very much variation, variation and sort of peculiarities in the characters in regard to art style but basically some people think this is good writing some people think this is a good a good quality publication she did not even have to touch these yoma now whether this is done to save time and money in other words not having to write as many pages on the manga issue that you create or not Oftentimes, people do not read and narrate these things. If I paid money for this, and I looked through my little manga magazine, all right, and I bought this in paper form, and I said, wait, she didn't even... I wanted to see a fight. I wanted to see a fight. She just walked right past them. I was sheeted out of money. Those few pages, whatever I saw, was not very substantial. All right? And I do not think that manga writers and comic book writers are held to the same standard that many professional writers are. And I know this. 
and it is not very good writing and it used to be primarily so to a long time ago this was not something that you know when the first comics were sort of released um I suppose there was an adult audience, but these were primarily written for children, and the same thing is still true today in regard to manga and comic books in general. Now, you would ask, why would anyone want to sort of write a narrative in which it is not as mas- it is not so very mature to... I, I do not think these are mature, to be honest. I think this is a joke. You have people arguing about what number they are. You get to a certain age, and that stuff seems really stupid to you. And you start to think, all right, is this really a serious story that I, as a person who per adventure is maybe 30 years old, really cares about and can really relate to? No, not really. But anyhow, that is a whole other subject. The point I'm trying to make is that she just walked past some Yoma, and they just died. And we are supposed to wrap our minds around this, and basically, the artist is telling you, I do not have to depict this. I do not have to write about this. You can use your own mind and think about what happened. I'm not going to tell you or depict or convey what happened to you because I am either too lazy to do it or I just simply do not want to do it. They are just simply that powerful. They are that fast. You have to wrap your head around this this weird thing that just happened. And that is very annoying to me. I do not like that. All right, I simply do not. Um... Anyhow, let me continue. And I am going to take another breath. All right. That does help sometimes. Why are you fighting one another? Your orders were to eliminate the Yoma in this town. Were they not? All right, more blood, even though there was no fight. When she walked past, they just died. Elena, it's been a while. I see why they call you Quicksword Elena. We didn't even see you draw. Or no, it was because the artist did not want to actually draw a fight, and we just saw... I do not really understand... Never mind. Um, That was not entertainment for me. That was not entertaining to me. I do not know about you, but I was not entertained. Anyhow, um, I'm going to clear my throat. Um, I will be back very shortly. All right. Basically, they want to explain what happened. And, and tell us that that was not due to laziness. And it was basically because she's so fast, you did not even see her move at all. She's, she's just still walking. She did not draw her sword out. We saw no fight. I hate this stuff in manga. I really do not like it. And to me, it is just purely due to laziness. I read all sorts of books. All sorts of types of media. Literature. And no one... I, as far as I know, no one else can really get away with not really depicting a scene. In any other type of medium, you actually have to depict the scene that you are sort of referring to. Um, oftentimes, in, in manga, in, in anime, um, you can just get away with saying that the, she's so fast, she did not even have to move. You did not see her move. But she was so fast, they're just her enemy is just dead. All right. And there isn't a drop of blood on you from killing the Yom at point blank range. Impressive. No doubts. You're number two. And this is stupid. This is so stupid. You're just that good. You 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 do not even have to draw your sword. They just die and just sort of explode in bloodshed. Apparently, here you are. You have nothing on your stupid little... These outfits are so corny. I know some of you people who are fanatics, fans, because fan means fanatic. Um, in other words, those of you who are not critics like I am. Some of you think this outfit is really awesome. 
I always have been a person who has been against this outfit. It looks so, so... Everyone look. I mean, we have three warriors here. They all look the same, basically, with the outfits. The, the outfits look so... It's basically a girl in some little booty, booty shorts or something. I mean, these are... I mean, and you know, she has a leotard. She has a little thing that sort of is covering it when you look at the anime and when you look at the other artwork. But nonetheless, it is just very... I never like this armor. I do not care if they have a leotard covering up some part. This this armor is very... You know, I never like the armor. That is just my opinion. And for those of you who did not know, this is a highly critical you know, commentary video by a... A person who has some very, um, how should it be said, who's very outspoken about his opinion, so to speak. All right. What's the plan now that we're all here? It's not ru- it's not ridding the town of Yoma, that's for sure. That's true. Any of us could have done the job alone. There must be a reason we've been called here. It's to kill number one. We've been given orders to kill Teresa. Oh, they're so surprised. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness. All right. Teresa? You mean Teresa of the faint smile? But why? She killed humans, a group of bandits. She left the organization after cutting down those who were sent to purge her. No, really? I can't believe she would go that far. It's our duty to submit to execution. That's why they summon numbers two through five to enforce the rule and use our combined strength to kill Teresa. All right, girls surprised. Numbers two through five, then there should be four of us. Is there another? Yes. So they want our combined strength to fight number one. Hmm, interesting. But who's number five? You really are an idiot. It's Elda. It's not Elda. It's number two. I recently became number three. Oh, everyone's surprised. Don't be daft. What are you talking about? That means... Correct. Your number's four and five now. That can't be. Number two was just certified she's new. She jumped to number two in the last few months. Now this is the whole situation where in Claymore, what what you will find is that they often talk about the numbers, the rank. This person's number two. That person's number five. Wow, I can't believe number one is, is Teresa. And this is, this is number two. That's number four. I'm a higher number than you. Now, I have talked about this before in some of my earlier videos where I said that Japanese people, they have a particular culture that is very concerned about being number one or being better than someone else, especially in their workforce culture. In other words, you do a job in an office and you are competing with other people, you want to be the best. And in Japan, that culture is really sort of, um, how, should it, how should it be said, it is very, very pertinent to them. All right? Being number one is a very, it is a very important thing in their culture, whereas some of us here in the United States, a good many of us, we do not think about, like, we do not think like that. Many of us, are more laid back in regard to our sort of status. I mean, many of us would say, uh, okay, you're the best, I guess, or, you know, I'm kind of good, you're kind of good. You, in Japan, status is very, I mean, being number one, being the best at something or being in a very high position, that is sort of the norm and sort of something that is desired. In regard to what you desire, in um, so we see some ver- very interesting Japanese cultural norms displayed in some of these anime and some of these manga. 
Um, it is very interesting to note it. All right. I'm going to take another breath. All right. I'm doing those particular breathing, those particular sounds sort of helps me cleanse my body of stale air. Um, or at least that is the particular um, explanation of that Japanese, of that Chinese health practice, the six healing sounds. All right. One moment, please. Um, but yes, the number thing, in regard to writing, in regard to how, you know, culturally relevant that was, to me it was very boring. I really saw, thought the conversations around numbers was were very immature. I really did not relate to that at all. I thought, all right, who cares? Wow, I'm number, I kill more Yoma than you, I'm number one, you're number two. It was very boring. It was very boring to me. A novice? How does someone like that get made number two? Don't make me laugh. If you have a problem with it, take the number two spot yourself. One look was enough to satisfy me. Huh? Eek. Ouch. Ow, 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 ow. Who's that? What an idiot. There were more of us? She's the one. The one who was just certified. The number two. The new number two. Um, it's, it's Priscilla. Right now, the whole number thing. Oh my goodness. It was very, very... I mean... Maybe when I was younger, I would have took the whole, you know, this whole number thing in Claymore a, a good deal more seriously. And I guess I sort of do not take it seriously now because I am um, in my early 30s and I, these things to me are very simplistic. I, I am, maybe when I was a teenager, I would have said, wow, that's number two, that's number three. Boring. To me, it's, it is so very Oh my, I, I remember when I was maybe 11 or 12 and I used to take anime and cartoons very seriously. I used to think, wow, excuse me, I used to look at power levels and things of this sort and I used to be amazed. I used to say, think, all right, this is number, you know, well, it was not even like that because I really did not watch Claymore, um, the, manga, the anime, and I really did not read the manga until, you know, maybe a couple years ago. But you know, this, you know, the power level thing is very, to me, I, I have always thought it was very boring. Okay, she's surprised. What? Are you joking? She's just a child. Is the organization out of its mind? Like I said, if you have a problem with it, take the number two spot yourself. Okay, some type of sound. That's fine with me. No, wait. I show you what it takes to be number two. You have to really think about how stupid this is. I, I, I don't really even know what to say. These are supposed to be warriors. You know, the defenders of the realm, so to speak, are so juvenile that they fight over numbers. Um... I thought it was quite dumb. I still think it is quite dumb. I look back on it and I think, wow, who wrote this? This does not seem serious at all. Everyone's wearing the same outfit. They're fighting over what number they are. You know, of course, we have this one. She's like, yeah, you know, I sort of know everything's going to happen. And she's like, wow, this, hey, don't do that. And it's like, we have the hot headed person. To me, it is very boring, very stupid. Um, Okay, I guess she's going to fight this one. Get up. We'll sell this right here. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For, forgive me. 
for being late. It took a while to take care of the Yama. I... Eh? What did you say? I said get up and fight. A few Yama shouldn't have slowed... Oh, okay. Now she killed through these ones. Uh, it it has no climatic effect. It's no climatic effect. To me, it's all very... Wow, look at this. This is supposed to surprise you. Look at how powerful she is. What? I have seen... I mean, there has been no... I do not like easy battles. And you have to wait through the, you know, until you read later on in the manga, and then the, the fights become more interesting, so to speak. Um, and every, the, the whole thing in manga of being surprised, especially in combat-heavy manga, where basically the whole point is to surprise you, the reader, or to show you the surprise of the characters. And you see it especially, it is more... Um, it has a ba better conveyance in anime because you get to hear voice actors who put on a surprise voice. Wow, what on earth is this? Um, how did you do that? I'm so impressed. Um, and although you do see that in, you know, Western comic books as well as um, American cartoons, um... It is not something that is, emph is, is emphasized as much as it is. In Japanese culture, um, where basically standing out as the best or standing out as an individual who is not like everyone else is very... I mean, it is very favored if you could be better. Even though... Um... um in, in that very, in some of those very, um, you know, uniform traditions, you have situations where, you know, basically in these companies, um, especially that many Japanese people work at, they sort of live a life in which everything is sort of managed in such a way you can't grow, grow your hair a certain length, you can't grow beards if you work at, a, you know, in most companies, Everyone basically has to look the same as a man. Basically, no facial hair. You wear a suit, you go to work. Your life is boring. And I think a lot of people who live that life like to, you know, fantasize and imagine that maybe in another world or another fantasy universe, they could be the best. And so this is, this is where this idea of being number one sort of, I think sort of connects to many Japanese people. Um, and not to say that that culture is not pertinent and relevant here in the United States, because it is, but many of us do not realize just how important that idea is in Japan. Some of us may say, I really do not understand this. These, these people are fighting over numbers. Where did this whole idea, this sort of weird cultural fascination with being number one come from? Um, honestly, and it, it, it took, to me, I thought the, the, the manga would have been more interesting if this whole stupid thing about numbers was not even in the story. I thought, all right, you can use that, those pages to write something else more interesting than some girls fighting about numbers. I really do not care about the some girls fighting about numbers. I'm number six. You're number five. And who cares? All right. Honestly, that just seemed dumb to me. But anyhow, let me continue. What on earth is this? A horde of Yoma shot to bits? But... The battle was so close, and yet I didn't sense it. It doesn't matter who she fights or how many there are. She kills them all without exhausting her Yama power. She's like Teresa of the faint smile. And she hates Yama more than anyone. My legs shook from fear when I saw her in combat. I suspect her latent abilities are even greater than Teresa's. Normally, I wouldn't fight Teresa. 
no matter how many of us took her on. All right. So, basically, um, you do see this in manga and anime a lot. The latent power thing. This person has some secret powers that no one else has. They are really super strong, but no one knows. They're just holding it back, and nobody can see it. Um, I see this a lot in manga. I see this a lot in anime. I've seen it so many times it gets boring to me. I guess I've really gotten bored of a lot of combat-heavy things because to me, I just see the same stories over and over again. That person's really strong, but they're just holding back. They're just holding back. Don't worry. They have latent potential, latent power that they're holding back, and one day they're going to unleash it, and they're just going to kill everybody, and, you know, nobody expected this shit. Okay? Nobody expected this shit. They're just going to come out of nowhere and everybody's going to be surprised. You'll see that sort of thing. I get very bored of it. I think it is somewhat shallow. I Because I've seen it so many times. And whether I'm just a man complaining or not, I think when you have as much style as me, I guess you think everything is corny. Though that I do think that is somewhat self-extravagant for me to say. Anyhow, let me continue. But if you're watching this video, you most likely are watching it to listen to some... to a man complain? <laughs> In sooth. So, well, if you came here for that, um, you most certainly will have such a video. Alright. But seeing Priscilla changed my mind. This child was soon surpassed Teresa. Okay, some sound effect that I'm not going to do because none of these sound effects ever make sense to me. Tired, Claire? I'm okay, Teresa. We'll soon reach a town I visited long ago. We can rest there a while. Okay. Um, alright, so that was chapter 18. Um, I have to say I... <laughs> um, I, I really do not know. To me, going back and reading it, I mean, I just can't take off the number stuff seriously anymore. Maybe if I was younger. Maybe if I was serious about th these types of stories, I'd say, wow, that's, this is so intense, man. This is so intense. Did you see the episode of Claymore? Did you see the? Did you read the Claymore manga? That was a really great manga, and I had read the whole manga. All right, and personally, I thought the writing was not that good, and I think that honestly, when I see manga reviews, I noticed that very few of them, if hardly any of them actually read it and they don't tell me what exactly is good about the writing style or you know the artwork or any of the things that transpire um at all so anyhow um i mean there's that so um this is a series i did not really expect i would sort of continue because I, I was not really doing it for a long time when I said, but I said I, I started this and I said if I start something I want to finish it so um, I will be reading more. I have not given up on the series. Anyhow viewers, may you be blessed and farewell. All right.